طلبة أه على بنات اللي طلبة في الجامعة أه عندهم بزاف تاع الضغوطات ستريس إكسيتيرا دونك أه ينحيو هذاك ستريس تاعهم أترافيغ نشاطات والإيفنت كما الإي كان توكس تاع هذا العام في الجامعة سو نادي النادي تاعنا عنده بزاف الإنجازات منها أنه حاز على المرتبة الثالثة في مسابقة دولية علمية بمشاركته بمشروع تاعو البروجيكت اللي كان الجرين غاز سو الجرين غاز هو بروجيكت يعتمد على تحويل البقايا العضوية إلى غاز وطاقة و also نادي احتاز المرتبة الثانية في ناشونال كومبيتيشن مسابقة وطنية So, je vais laisser la parole à Priel. Priel, go ahead. Priel. Priel, can you speak? Can you hear me? Priel. Okay, so no problem. No problem, Malish, we can move on. Okay. So there are some pictures. These are the photos we took from the previous editions of Tanken Talks, which were organized in the University of Tunisian here in Algeria, so the Faculty of Biology and the Faculty of Chemistry. Okay, so the first one is one of the best pictures that we can see when we see. كامل الأشخاص يعني المساهمين في هذاك النشاط يكونوا في هذيك التصويرة وجو يبان باللي المعنى الحقيقي تاع النادي سي اون فامي اللي الأشخاص تاعها رائعون ويكملوا بعضهم بعض. So we're gonna move to small definition الكنتوكس. فريال يو ريز يور هاند. Go ahead فريال. Je te laisse la parole. Priel Priel Connection Okay. Okay. So we have Kim Lo. So what is the Kim Talks? The Kim Talks is an annual event, a year-long event. Every year, we add a new edition. We bring in the speakers from different fields and different fields. This will be a different variety. ويشاركوا فيهم التجارب تاعهم باش الشباب تاعنا يكون عنده تحفيز كي يسمع التجارب نجاح تاع الاخرين This year هذا uh, العام كان عندنا بروبليم تاع الكوفيد so it's a global pandemic uh, on the day we عملوا ليفينمون تاعنا اونلاين uh, organized on zoom Uh, so it's a uh, it's an opportunity for us here for Salina Bush and Jibu speakers from all around the world. Hagda Bush can and home for so it's kill mo or limon can makanush matkush and home for so but she's you who can organize in a living more than Tana for Jamia Tatinsa. Real, can you hear me? Yes, Malo Rosmond, Nico Tech and Marsh desactive and desactive action. What number of my hubs. Ok, c'est pas grave. Et, uh, vas-y, tu nous présentes le planning. Je te laisse la porte. D'accord, oui. 
نبداو بالبلان نيك تاع اليوم راح يكونوا معنا دو سبيكر الوغ دكتور مذكور اي بروفيسور كزياني بعد كل سبيكر راح يكون كاين فتره فيها كويشن اند انسور وراح يكون كاين ثاني اون بوتيت بوز نريحوا فيها و ونبدلوا الافكار دونك جا لا باول اني Thank you. So we're going to move to our first speaker, Talium, Dr. Amatkur. So, uh, Dr. Amatkur has a PhD from Concordia University of Canada, so and the doctora, and also يعمل على بحوث علمية حول breast cancer وحول metabolic disorders. So he is also واحد من مؤسسي RIM Labs and NBT consultants. Uh, I believe he is here and he can tell us more about himself. So go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes, yeah. Okay, cool. Let me just share my screen. Uh, can you allow me to share my screen too? Yes. Okay. I think I could do it. No, en attendant, je suis là comme je suis la baisse. How are you guys? Ça va, on te laisse, ça va? I'm good, I'm good. Ok, can you see this? Yes. Bon. Um, so, thank you for inviting me here today to speak uh, in your association. I usually like to participate in um, events organized by Algerian associations. Uh, every time I go to Algeria, usually I go and do one one by one and then go back to Canada. Uh, we can't do it because of COVID, but uh, it's okay. We can do it online. Um, so I might speak, okay? I might speak in French, English, or Arabic. Uh, yeah. Hopefully, you guys will be able to follow. But uh, the idea for my talk today is to uh, help Algerians change their way of thinking so that they can succeed uh, in their life. Okay. And I'm saying this because, um, you know, I've, I've lived outside of Algeria and inside of Algeria. And although I am in Canada right now, I'm still 100% Algerian. Uh, I'm very close to my country, so I can see some problems that could be fixed um, to make us become a better society, right? Um, so one thing, though, the problem is that in tant qu'Algerien, when, when you're living outside of the country and you're telling Algerians living in Algeria how to live, uh, if it was me, I would be I like, what are saying, right? <laughs> so I have, to, I have to make it more credible, right? So here it is. <laughs> So this is me in my uh, young days. I'm 100% Algerian. Google 100%. You can see this. I'm pretty sure you guys know this one. <laughs> so um, I'll, I'll go over my life. Uh, and I'll tell you, like, uh, and every time I get somewhere interesting, I'll, uh, I'll tell you what should be changed and how I did it in my life and where it got. So where do I start? I was born in Algeria. Uh, my father is a has a PhD. He was a professor in Algeria in physics. Uh, he taught there for 20 years. Uh, my mom was at home, Tamo Fouye. And uh, we came here to Canada in 2002, where we lived here since then. Um, I studied everything here, but every year or so I go back to Algeria. Actually, before the pandemic, I spent six months there. So I stayed there for six months and then came back here. Um, but yeah, this picture here in the middle is uh, me in uh, the Wartana because my grandparents are, are 
they have like you know jnanat and all that so every every time i go every saturday uh, friday i go there and i help them you know with the trees and all that um and this is me when i was younger little bogos <laughs> but yeah that's basically me so i was born in algeria i grew up in canada but i am 100% algerian it's actually funny because my mom right now is making uh, i think you guys call it na'ma uh, or ta'am uh, or couscous whatever you guys call it she's making yeah, it right yeah. now. <laughs> right now <laughs> if i call her she's going to bring it so the idea here is just to make you think that i am exactly like you uh, and what about i'm about to tell you um i live it and i plan to do what i'm saying okay so when i grew up i was uh, like every guy <laughs> i was playing video games all the time uh, consulting uh, even though my father is a professor <laughs> but uh, luckily what happened to me i didn't have good grades in la uh, licence but what happened to me is that uh, when i was younger at the age of 12 years old i started coding i started learning how to code and uh, by the time i got to university i was pretty good at it um, The thing is, my father, uh, when I told him I want to go in software engineering, Majbush Hal, he's like, no, that's a tool. You shouldn't be doing that. خلنا في حكاية engineering or medicine or all that stuff, right? So that's the amlu in biology. Uh, then transferred to med school, but evidently I was all the time for Khawi for the salle de jeu, so the grades weren't there, so I couldn't go there. <laughs> um, one thing that worked out though is after my first year. I started doing research uh, because I knew how to code and I knew how to develop software. Um, I what I did is I contacted a professor and I was like, "Oh, can I uh, work in your team?" And he's like, "No, I don't hire undergraduate students." I'm when I gave I built it. At some point, he's like, okay, "You know what? Just come." <laughs> and that's where I started working. Uh, I was developing a software to analyze uh, the evolution of some gene. The project wasn't interesting, but it's just because I needed credibility to get into med school. I was still trying to. Um, after that, since then, I've been doing research, um, which is kind of special because usually people start doing research for uh, master. At the end of the license, at the beginning of the master here in Canada, in Algeria, I know that it's in M2 that you do the research. But that's it. So I started to do the research. I learned a few skills. I became good in my uh, microscopy. I became good in mass spectrometry. I think you guys know this technique very well because you're chemists. Um, yeah. I also became very good in bioinformatics. And so that helped me get from one lab to another. And I worked on, uh, now I'm at the fourth research group, but I worked in three different research groups. Um, one thing though is uh, before getting into master's, you need this. A certain grade, uh, I didn't have that grade, and so what happened is that this pr- professor I contacted to do uh, research in his lab, he knew that I had all these skills, and so he made he went to l'administration and all that to get me in without that grade, right? No, <laughs> it's a very important. Part. Then I transferred to the PhD, okay, because Hnaya. Oh, Canada, if, you're, uh, if you have uh, good skills in research and you demonstrate them by doing research and by publishing, uh, you can skip, you can do M1 and then jump directly to PhD. So that's what I did. The thing is, uh, at the beginning of my uh, PhD, uh, what happened is that I got into a problem. That's the logo of the police here <laughs> in Canada, in Montreal. Uh, this is me, the picture they take when they bring you in. Uh, but basically, I'm not going to get into it, but I got into a problem with uh, the law. And at the same time, not because I was making like uh, problems in school or whatever, but uh, they thought I was copying something, uh, plagia, right? And so that, so that year, I went uh, for the Conseil Disciplinaire, la Cour Civile, la Cour Criminelle, and the dossier just got closed three months ago, from the mois de juillet. So you can imagine how passing your whole PhD at the same time having problems with la, la justice. Um, it's pretty crazy on your head, right? But I survived. We're good. <laughs> um, okay. 
So where did my career kind of start? I think it started in my PhD where I was studying uh, aging and age-related diseases uh, in the laboratory of uh, Vladimir Tikorenko. Um, my goal, so we were doing a partnership, uh, my university, Concordia, with Idan Technologies, where we would, uh, I was screening uh, a group of uh, plant extracts. So c'est des produits naturels qui viennent des plantes. Parce que can uh, can deux, deux types de médicaments, disons, naturels ou synthétiques. <laughs> Mais yes. ce qu'on commence à réaliser, c'est que le, le naturel, la terre, je veux dire, les, les plantes et tout ça, ont déjà beaucoup de molécules qui peuvent être utilisées pour uh, la santé humaine. Donc, on n'a pas besoin de réinventer le, 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 le médicament. Il faut juste les trouver. Donc, on a pris une liste. Exactement, oui. On a pris une liste de, de produits naturels et on les a testés pour voir s'ils augmenteraient la, vie, la durée de vie cellulaire. Et ce qui s'est passé, c'est que j'ai, par hasard, découvert euh, avec une autre étudiante un groupe de six produits naturels qui augmentent la durée de vie euh, de plus que ce qui a été décrit dans la littérature de recherche. Mais moi, je n'avais pas réalisé ça dans ma tête. Je me suis dit, ah, ce n'est pas quelque chose de fou. Jusqu'à ce que les... les The, uh, the newspaper and all those start calling you and you're like, well, what am I, <laughs> what's happening? <laughs> But yeah, so that was my PhD. Um, I did my PhD uh, in four years. So I graduated at the age of 26, which um, is pretty fast, I believe. Um, and that's, this is the team that discovered uh, the plant extract. The plant extract, so there's me, there's the other student that... Uh, worked with me uh, on the project, and this is our supervisors, okay? So after this discovery, what happened is that um, I started getting uh, like attention from the media without understanding why. <laughs> Because for me, my discovery wasn't something crazy. Like uh, it was not in mammalian cells or in like uh, animals to say that I did something crazy, you know? It was in yeast, which is a model organism that we use to study aging, but it's easier to work with, right? But still, it's a big discovery. And so media started contacting me. Uh, I was walking in the and I could walk to university, and then you just see yourself in a big screen. You're like, what is happening? <laughs> it's crazy. And then I started getting conferences. I was uh, invited uh, to give conferences everywhere. Um, Of my research here being highlighted in newspaper, Algerian television, teaching, like just went crazy from, from that point. But I was not expecting this to happen to me. And since then, I started living in a way that is at that level. Because before that, I was not 100% serious. I was still in Dorshvi and the video games and all that stuff, right? Uh, one one, one uh, other thing is that I was selected as one of the top 10 in the university because uh, I was very productive in research. I published 13 articles during my uh, graduate studies, which is, they say it's impressive. And I'm not showing off or anything, but, you know, people, it's, it's a lot. Usually people publish one during their PhD or two. Um, and the reason why it's not because I'm a, a robot or anything. It's, it's just that I learned. And I shift supervisor Terry, he was giving us work. And then he would just write and then publish. I was like, okay, let's do that. So I started recruiting, recruiting students from my classes that I was teaching. I'd be like, come, you want to do research? Come. And I had a big team of 10 research, like smaller students, and I was acting like the supervisor. And so they would give data, 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 and I would just write uh, the, the stuff. So that got me there. Um, but before that, I was not like, I was not serious about school. I was not serious about anything. I was just playing video games and all that. So um, I'm going to get into my current research. I took only the chemistry stuff uh, from my research so that you, can, you guys can follow a bit. After we talk about my research, I'm going to start giving you like some tips or some things that I realized that Algerians could do to uh, improve in their lives um, and to actually succeed. Parce que quand euh, j'ai remarqué, en faisant affaire avec plusieurs Algériens, euh, qui disent, euh, par exemple, start this project, qui disent, qu'est-ce qu'on a fait déjà, c'est un peu plus. You know, or things like this. And me, these things, they annoy me. They, 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 I know it's not like that because 
I don't know. I think something made Algerians like negative about opportunities or whatever. And they think that um, they can't do anything in Algeria and they need to absolutely leave Algeria to succeed. But I'll explain that it's not true. Um, but before that, so after my PhD, I went back to Algeria. I spent like six months there uh, with my family because, you know, when you live in outside of the country, you don't see them. You see them once a year. That's if you go. I know people that don't go for five, six, seven, ten years. But me, I try. I have to go. So this time I went for six years um, right before the corona happened. And then I got stuck there. And then I had to take a special airplane to come back. But anyways, when I came back, I started working on a project. Okay, this project is studying uh, diabetes, uh, one of the metabolic disorders. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you some theory a bit, just so that you can follow me when I start talking about my project. Okay, um, you guys are chemists, but you probably have a little bit of uh, a small idea about uh, uh, biology. So in the cells, there is there are reactions that require oxygen. These reactions are not perfect. Sometimes they produce uh, these. Uh, the derivés, the radical libre, the the oxygen, right? So the superoxide, for example, it can be produced by the mitochondria or by this enzyme here called NADPH oxidase. In the cell, there are enzymes that will detoxify. I never explained my research in French, so I might like not have words, but follow. <laughs> Donc, il y a des enzymes qui vont agir comme antioxydants et qui vont prendre le superoxyde et le transformer en peroxyde, okay? peroxyde d'hydrogène. Ce peroxyde d'hydrogène, il est réactif, mais pas beaucoup, et donc il peut servir comme molécule de signalisation. C'est-à-dire, il peut réagir avec les protéines, l'ADN, euh, les lipides, etc. Et puis, tout dépendant de, de, de la concentration de les radicaux libres, ce qui va se passer, c'est que s'il y en a trop, ce n'est pas bon pour les cellules parce qu'il va créer des mutations s'il réagit avec l'ADN. Euh, puis les mutations, il y en a plusieurs qui sont connues qui causent le cancer, plusieurs qui sont connues qui causent le diabète, etc. Et s'il n'y en a pas assez, la signalisation, elle, elle n'est pas... It doesn't happen. And so, what's going to happen is that the cells are not going to be uh, working properly. Right? Le peroxyde, elle, il est connu pour réagir avec les euh, thiolates. SH, le sulfure, c'est ce groupe-là ici, le sulfure, les cystines, en fait, des protéines. Puis qu'est-ce qui va se passer C'est qu'il va oxyder ces cystines. Puis ça, ça va changer la structure de la protéine et des fois même la fonction de la protéine. Par exemple, si, ici, je vous montre les réactions. Si, euh, si ce peroxyde réagit avec un thiolate, ça va produire un acide sulfinique. Cette réaction est réversible possible de revenir en arrière. Donc, ça permet euh, au peroxyde d'hydrogène d'agir comme molécule de signalisation et conférer des propriétés euh, aux protéines tout dépendant de qu ce qui se passe. Par exemple, une protéine peut, quand le peroxyde d'hydrogène réagit avec deux cystines dans son groupe, euh, dans son centre euh, site catalytique, ça va former un, un pont des sulfures comme ça. Et ce pont des sulfures-là va empêcher la protéine d'agir comme force fatale. Bon, je vais arriver, dans le, je vais mettre le contexte dans quelques minutes, mais s'il y, si y a trop de peroxyde, qu'est-ce qui va se passer C'est qu'on va avoir des réactions qui vont transformer l'acide sulfinique en sulfinique et après sulfonique. Et ça, ça va amener la protéine à se faire dégrader. Okay? Donc, le peroxyde va faire quelque chose à la protéine, soit cette protéine va avoir une nouvelle fonctionnalité, ben, va, 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 va être active ou inhibée, soit ça va emmener cette protéine à se faire dégrader. Okay? Et puis, moi, spécifiquement, je travaille sur, une, sur un groupe de protéines qui s'appelle euh, les estrogen-related receptors. Ils ne sont pas... Leur nom vient de, du fait que leur structure ressemble à celle de, du récepteur d'estrogène. Par contre, il n'y a aucun lien. En fait, cette protéine-là sert comme un facteur de transcription qui va aller euh, se coller à l'ADN et activer certains gènes métaboliques. On peut voir ici, si euh, on l'active, ben, it binds to uh, genes that are related to the TCA cycle, le cycle de Krebs, euh, glutamine, glutathione, metabolism, etc. Pourquoi je vous dis ça? Parce que avant de commencer mon 
postdoc, j'ai vu ce professeur-là, Vincent Gigard. Euh, c'est un grand chercheur. Il a été reconnu par... Euh, il a découvert huit des récepteurs, incluant une isoforme du récepteur d'estrogène. De, Donc, la plupart des livres que vous allez lire sur les récepteurs nucléaires et la signalisation, le trois quarts, <rire> ça vient de lui. Euh, il a été reconnu par la Société royale du Canada comme euh, fellow. Ça, c'est la plus haute distinction qu'on a ici au Canada pour les chercheurs. Donc, je me suis dit, je me suis dit tu sais quoi, on va essayer. Je l'ai contacté, puis il m'a dit, ouais, bien, euh, tu vas travailler sur... Euh, je lui ai proposé le, le projet de travailler sur l'oxydation de cette protéine dans le contexte du diabète. Euh, puis ce travail que vous voyez ici, je ne vais pas trop rentrer dans le détail, mais c'est un étudiant euh, au post-doctorat qui a découvert ça, que si on traite les cellules avec du peroxyde, eh bien, le niveau de protéines de ERR, alpha et gamma, qui sont des isoformes, ça change. Donc, ils réagissent au peroxyde d'hydrogène. OK mon projet à moi, c'est d'étudier l'oxydation de ces protéines-là euh, dans le but de trouver un médicament ou de développer un médicament pour le diabète de type 2. Bon, je sais qu'il y a plusieurs médicaments qui existent pour le, di le diabète de type 2. Par contre, euh, les médicaments, euh, même si on découvre quelque chose qui… Même si les médicaments existent, ça ne change pas le fait qu'on essaie d'améliorer les médicaments qu'on a et d'améliorer les traitements pour avoir… Euh, ben, pour diminuer les risques, les effets secondaires, ou juste, par exemple, pour diminuer les coûts de ces médicaments-là. Parce que c'est vrai que glucophage, par exemple, peut-être que là-bas, il, il est remis, le diabète, le gouvernement, il te redonne l'argent. Par contre, pas mal sûr qu'il y a des pays qu'ils ne sont pas remboursés. Et puis, mm -hmm. euh, puisque les pays, tu as le first world country, le western world country, they make these drugs, they impose their prices on us, right? And so we always need to develop better solutions than the existing ones. And that's the idea behind the project. And you never know, we might even cure diabetes, even though it's a chronic disease, we might even find a way to cure it um, through this. But anyways, this is the protein structure of uh, the two ERRs. As you can see, there are plusieurs groups in the So the theory is that le, le, les radicaux à l'oxygène à ils vont réagir avec un de ces cystines ou plusieurs de ces cystines et changer leur structure. Et quand ça change leur structure, comme j'ai dit plus tôt, soit ils vont se faire dégrader, soit ils vont avoir une nouvelle fonctionnalité. Bon, le côté clinique, ça c'est la partie la plus intéressante, j'imagine. Donc en fait, qu'est-ce qui se passe, c'est que euh, on a le diabète, usually, on a euh, hyperglycémie, on a trop de sucre dans le sang. Puis après, ça s'induit une hyperinsulinémie. Oh. <rire> <Okay. rire> This hyperglycemia, uh, what's, what it's going to do is that it's going to force the cells to work harder uh, to metabolize that sugar. And that sugar will create les radicaux libres qui vont inhiber cette uh, voie de signalisation ici qui sert à uh, il s'occupe du métabolisme du, de, du glucose. En d'autres mots, même si l'insuline va aller à cause de ces radicaux libres qui inhibent cette euh, voie de signalisation, même si l'insuline va venir se coller sur le récepteur de l'insuline, ça ne va pas avoir aucun effet parce que la voie HADI, elle est inhibée plus bas. Et donc, qu'est-ce qui se passe? C'est qu'on a une, euh, ce qu'on appelle l'insulin résistance, une résistance à l'insuline puis le taux de sucre continue à monter dans le sang, ben là, on a des problèmes nerveux, rétinopathie, etc. D'accord? Donc, les ROS, les radicaux libres, ils agissent sur plusieurs protéines, incluant ce que je pense, ça c'est la théorité, euh, ERR alpha. ERR alpha, il est en bas. Il n'est bon, pas ici parce que je n'ai pas encore fait les figures, je viens de commencer, mais euh, il est plus bas ici. Donc, si on est capable de... Euh, empêcher ERR alpha de se faire oxyder, on est capable de prévenir tout ce problème-là ici. Okay? Et ça, le but ici, c'est de développer des médicaments, euh, ce qu'on appelle, ça s'appelle precision medicine, c'est-à-dire qu'on vise un truc, une, une petite partie d'une molécule, puis c'est tout. D'accord Donc, même s'il y a un problème ici avec les radicaux libres, si on vise ERR alpha en bas et on le protège de, ce, de ces ross là on est capable d'enlever cette résistance à l'insuline. D'accord parce que qu'est-ce qui va se passer, c'est que tout ce qui est plus bas ici, 
tout ce qui est plus bas de, de, de la protéine va continuer à fonctionner, puis ça va réactiver ces trucs-là, etc. D'accord? I'm too sure that you're lost. <laughs> you guys are good? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, now, the second part, focus on my face. And so, uh, <laughs> uh, actually, wait, before I do that, let me show you something. Um, the other things that I do in my life are the phone. The first thing, uh, can you see? Can you guys see? Yeah. Yes, yes. So, um, j'ai toujours eu un esprit à quelqu'un d'entrepreneur. Je voulais toujours commencer des compagnies. Par contre, je ne l'ai jamais fait parce qu'avec les études, le, la recherche, tout ça, c'était un peu compliqué. Mais dès que j'ai fini, j'ai commencé deux compagnies. La première s'appelle Rim Labs pour Asim et Younes Mavkor <laughs> Labs. And what we do is basically, that's my cousin, by the way. He has a master's in engineering. And he's also the CTO of our company. And basically, what we do is we take startups, donc des compagnies qui viennent de commencer, et on les aide à réfléchir sur leur IT ecosystem. Et aussi, on l'implémente. Ce que je veux dire par là, c'est que quand tu commences comme... Euh, comme uh, startup, you need a lot of things. Tu as besoin d'un site web, une application mobile, tu as besoin de quelqu'un qui s'occupe de tes données, database, etc. Et puis, nous, notre travail, c'est de prendre le projet de cette personne-là et puis de le monter et de s'occuper de tout ça pour pas qu'il ait à réfléchir euh, sur ça. D'accord? Ce projet-là, euh, ce qu'on est en train de réfléchir à faire, c'est de outsource les projets qu'on a ici et de les envoyer en Algérie. Parce que mon cousin, il est là-bas en Algérie. En ce moment, il est consultant CRM pour Orido. Euh, donc, le but, le but, le but c'est de prendre des projets du Canada et de les faire développer en Algérie. D'accord? Donc, comme ça, on peut outsource du travail d'ici. Parce qu'ils ont trop de développeurs ici. Il faut faire travailler l'Algérie. <rire> Exactement. Donc, euh, on, on, on vient de commencer cette, cette compagnie, ça fait à peu près cinq mois. Euh, on est encore en train de travailler dessus, mais déjà, le site, il est disponible. La deuxième compagnie que j'ai commencé, qui est un peu plus avancée, ça s'appelle MBT Consultant. Cette compagnie, euh, qu'est-ce qu'elle fait? Encore, elle vise les startups. Et le but de cette compagnie, c'est d'aider les startups à développer leurs idées euh, dans le secteur de la biotechnologie. Euh, on aide aussi les investisseurs à évaluer les idées euh, d'une certaine euh, business côté euh, biotechnologie. L'autre truc qu'on fait aussi, c'est qu'on aide les compagnies euh, de recherche à développer leur plan d'études euh, pour pouvoir euh, mener leur projet dans, encore dans le secteur de la biotechnologie. La raison pourquoi, celle-là, je l'ai commencé avec un ami, cet ami-là que vous voyez à gauche, il a étudié avec moi du primaire jusqu'au jusqu doctorat, on a fait le doctorat ensemble, on a fini en même temps, on a tout fait en même temps. <rire> Euh, et puis, la raison pourquoi on vise les startups, c'est parce que dans les domaines comme les nôtres, c'est-à-dire les domaines euh, en sciences, technologie, maths, tout ça, euh, c'est compliqué de partir une idée. Ce n'est pas comme si tu disais, euh, je vais aller ouvrir euh, un restaurant. Oui, c'est compliqué, mais ce n'est pas si compliqué. Mais quand tu commences à parler de médicaments, et de, de technologie, de, de trucs, là, on rentre dans les certifications, la régulation, la réglementation et tout ça. Et puis, qu'est-ce qui arrive, c'est que Plusieurs étudiants, comme vous, euh, en ce moment, quand vous commencez à étudier à l'université, moi, ça m'est arrivé. J'ai des milliers d'idées. Par contre, dès que je commence à réfléchir à comment je vais l'implémenter, je vois qu'il ah, faut le capital pour commencer. Il faut que je comprenne la régulation. Il faut un, un, un lawyer, un avocat pour pouvoir faire tous les papiers, tout ça. Euh, où est-ce que je vais obtenir mon matériel, etc. Et après, tu abandonnes. Et le problème, c'est que la plupart de ces, ces idées-là, elles peuvent être révolutionnaires dans le sens que il euh, y, y a une théorie en psychologie, par exemple, qui dit que euh, la créativité, elle, 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 elle décline à travers l'âge parce qu'on est soumis aux forces de, de la société et tout ça. Donc, c'est les jeunes qui, qui innovent. Ce n'est pas les vieux. Bon, je généralise, mais il y, y a plusieurs vieux qui sont en train de <rire> qui comprendre. Il y en a des jeunes qui passent leur journée à la salle de play. Mais l'idée, c'est que quand on est jeune, on a moins de contraintes sur notre réflexion et donc on est plus apte à innover. Le problème, c'est que quand ces jeunes-là, ils voient que c'est compliqué de partir une compagnie, ils ont peur et ils abandonnent l'idée. Donc, nous, notre but, c'est de les aider à se rendre, de partir de l'idée à la business sans trop se casser la tête. D'accord? 
tout ça pour dire. Les Algériens, mais pas en général, les Algériens. Uh, now people are not going to like me, but I have to do it. So, um, first, I need to tell you that uh, I am going to come back to Algeria. Um, the only reason why I'm still in Canada right now is because I'm the indebted étudiant. I'll tell you the amount you're going to faint, 600 million dinar. So it's a lot of money. I have to pay that before I can come back to Algeria. Otherwise, if I already did that, I would be back in Algeria right now. Um, The reason for that is, although I grew up here, I think that, um, at least for me, at least for me, I have to be in my country because my family is there and all that stuff. Je suis un peu patriotique, okay? <laughs> uh, that's normal. My father always speaks about, like, if I go right now, he's probably watching some stuff about politic or whatever. <laughs> um, he's retired, so that's all he does. <laughs> From morning to night, he's listening to uh, the, 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 the Algerian channel. But um, yeah, so what did I want to say? So when I'm done with that, I'm going to come back and I want to work in Algeria. I want to teach in Algeria. I want to have my own lab in Algeria and potentially start companies in Algeria. Okay. The thing is, um, the thing is people, when I tell them that, they're like, oh, why would you come back to Algeria? Well, what are you going to do here? Uh, there's nothing to do, no one is going to help you. Okay, but the idea I want to push here is that um, if you see a lot of the professors, even in this event, they studied like the professor that was supposed to be, uh, I think he's presenting today, Ziyani uh, Shoki, no? It's uh, who, who was after yeah. me. Or, okay, it's him. Okay. So he studied in Strasbourg and he studied for postdoctorat in the United States, postdoctorat in Canada, right? So you have France, USA, Canada, and what is he doing now? He's in Algeria, right? There must be yes. a reason behind that. There must be a reason behind that. And it's funny because I know a lot of professors in Algeria that studied abroad and then came back to Algeria. And that's the whole idea. Now, if you go talk to someone who doesn't do anything in Algeria, يضل في القهاوي يقرا في 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 الجورنال الخبر وعنده قهوه يدور بها نهار كومبلي هيز غانا تيل يو الخير بيكوز هي اول هي سيز از ذا موفيز اند بيبل تيلين هيم اه يا اخو انا نحرق انا كارها انا البلاد هاي بات ذا رياليتي از ذا وانز ذات ار ادوكيتد اند جو اوت سايد ذي ريلايز ذات ذي هاف تو جو باك تو ذير كونتري ذي هاف تو بيلد ذير كونتري اند ذي دونت فيل ات هوم اوت سايد اوف الجيري اوكي اي ثينك Um, I think the idea here um, is that we as Algerians, although like we're still a developing country, uh, I think we can do a lot better. And I'm going to tell you this, if you don't like what I'm hearing, I'm sorry. <laughs> But if I can change the mindset of one person in this meeting, I would be happy. So the thing is, I grew up in so I saw how people work here. And I also saw people how they work in Algeria. And it's two different worlds. Okay. Um, For example, um, on va commencer par la politique, on va dans la Now in Algérie, we have this thing here, ta hkait islamiste, berberiste, arabiste, je sais pas trop quoi. Everyone is separating, okay? And this is, I, I believe it's problematic for Algerians. Why? Even here in Canada, we have these kind of people. Because Canada, in, in, I think there's 193 countries in here or something like that. Everyone comes from everywhere. And so the thinkings are all we have more than what's in Algeria, right? And there is even different mentalities. Like there, it, it's crazy. We have Buddhist, Muslim, you name it, you name it, okay? Black, white, orange, yellow. You understand, right? Diversity, And yes. The thing is, here in Canada, for example, they learn to work together. When I'm, I'm Algerian, whatever, we work together, can work together. <laughs> you know, but they, they, they work together here. So I think in Algeria, what's happening is that people take sides, but they should start thinking differently. They should start thinking that we can all work together. Islamist. Okay, I don't work with the Islamists because I'm anti, anti berberist So well, it's stuff like that. It's so stupid. Mm. Right? So if we're able to forget that, we can start working together. And it's crazy to say, but, you know, 
every group of people has something to, 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 to contribute. So if, for example, that guy has a skill and I have a skill, and if we work together, we can build something, but because we're separating each other like this, we cannot work together, then we're just messing up our lives, you know? We're messing up the country, the society, all that. That's number one. I wrote them here, so now I have to go to the second. <laughs> okay. <laughs> second one is risk taking. J'ai remarqué que les Algériens ils ont beaucoup de choses. Like if you talk to him, he's looking for the best solution that costs nothing. He's gonna get him work. He's gonna get him a degree. People are gonna right. But the reality, is, the reality is, what are you gonna lose? There's nothing to lose. Like you, your dad pays for everything. Your, your mom makes your food, cleans your clothes. You spend your day on your computer in your bed of live connective Facebook or Instagram. What are you going to lose? There's nothing to lose, right? But I realized that every time I tell someone, yo, let's do a business, me and you, let's start something, we can build it. He's like, la, la, no, no, impossible. I'm not engaged in anything. Why? You know, here in Canada, what they do? Give an example. I'm not saying they're better than us because they have a lot of bad stuff here that I can talk about. But my point is to make us Algerians be better. I don't care about how they, they are doing. Okay. Well, I do because they're humans, but other than that, <laughs> um, so here in Canada, they take risks. They take a lot of risks. They, they, some people take loans from the bank that are so crazy. You have no idea why, because they believe in their ideas. Right? Exactly. C'est pas tous les Algériens. Il y en a plein qui, qui ont réussi. Mais par contre, qu'est-ce qui se passe, c'est que on arrive à un stade où est-ce qu'on se met des limites avant même d'essayer. Par exemple, Ngulik, let's start a business. You tell me, yeah, it's not going to work. Right there, you prevent yourself from working. You cannot go beyond mm -hmm. that. Right? Or uh, if I tell you, uh, oh, let's start a, a business, for example, and you tell me, ah, yeah, let's start a business, for example, and you tell me, ah, yeah, let's start Okay, mechanical capital. The problem with these people is that they didn't even start the process. They didn't even take an idea and bring it to the point where they need money. They're talking before that. So how do you know that uh, no one is going to give you money or there is no capital flagging? You think that if you go to Sevital and you bring them an idea that's worth $1 billion, dollar, they're going to say, no, no, you have no capital? No one is stupid to not get involved with a project that will make them rich. Right? Right. And I'm not saying this just theoric. I worked with an association here in a foundation here in Canada that is an Algerian foundation and they promote the excellence of Algerians here. Um, they work with Sevital. You go, you ask the money, you're like, give us money, they give you money. And that's, it's, it's that simple. It's that simple. Actually, even fun. This happened to me, okay? The first time I went on Algerian television, Uh, I was still a student, full of debt. The jalbiyat l'avion to go to Algeria was a lot of money. So for me, it's more same kawel. And then they call me there, like we want to interview uh, in uh, Algiers. Okay, so me to take a hotel and all that, impossible, right? And I have my uncle who's there, but he's not like living in an apartment. And if any of you know Algiers, Dar al Beda is very very expensive, and so. He was sleeping in the, uh, this is me, listen carefully. <laughs> He was sleeping inside the, the camion, you know, the back of the, the camion. Yeah. So what happened is that because I was like, I, I didn't ask my parents, I could have, but you know, I don't want to force it, you know. <laughs> so I went there, I slept the night there. The next day, <laughs> an interview. It's crazy. But then when I got there, I realized that it doesn't work like that. The next interview I had, they had a car pick me up. I had a hotel with a view on the, the, the water, food, driver. This is in Algeria. It's not a, all I had to do is ask. All I had to do is ask. I'm like, I have an interview here. Can you please do this? And they're like, okay. As simple as that. But okay. I had something to contribute because I was making... Uh, like I was seeing, I was okay. I was famous. I don't like to say this, but basically, I, I was becoming famous. But for Algeria, like they like when they see someone succeeding outside the Italo, they, they're supportive, right? And so yeah. they, they help you for that. But they don't do anything, 
They don't do anything and they expect to get something back. If you give the government five dollars, he's not going to give you one million back. <laughs> what, what do you expect? You have to give one million to get back. You know, you understand? Logically, so, yes. So these limitations that we do on us thinking that um, there's no money, no opportunities, they're wrong. If you think that life got to your to you, and then now there's no money, no opportunities, no. There's people buying, people spending, people working. So money keeps moving. All you have to do is look for it. And to look for it, you cannot look for it just because you're cute. You need to look for it because you have a good idea that you can contribute to society or a good business, something that you have built, not just something random. So um, what else did I want to say? Something called the zero-sum mentality. Okay. Um, this means basically that... Um, there's opportunities for everyone, okay? Uh, we tend, like uh, in Algeria, for example, we tend to think that it's either me or Allah, right? It's more competitive. Mm -hmm. But if you really look into it, uh, there's a lot of opportunities. It's not it's just because you are not approaching it the right way. And to approach it the right way, you need to learn how to approach it, right? Um, here in Canada, for example, something that's different uh, people collaborate. They, they try to work together, not like against the other, you know? Something that I don't like about, and it's not everywhere in Algeria, but I have a professor in, uh, in teaching. He taught in Algeria, so I know that this is a big problem, okay? Hopefully it's not going to insult any professors that are going to see this, but there is a lot of professors in Algeria that break the students, okay? Sure. What do I mean by break the students? Okay. Ah, and tam tam betna shawi. Okay, this set so Ah, and tam an alji. You understand, right? There's that. Yeah. Number two is something that I I will never understand. تدخل الكوري يقول كنا في الكورتاع ما كانش ليجيب ليجيب فوق ديسة. Why? Why? It doesn't make sense. بعد هذوك لي بيرسون هذوك يطلعوا بوغ أبليكي بوغ لي بورس إنترناسيونال. They're gonna lose against the other countries. Why? Exactly. Because in Canada, we have 20 sur 20. You understand? Yes. The flashes have 20 sur 20. You understand? But we You break him right away. He cannot do anything. I was once in Canada. I was a Italian professor. He was a man of the mentality. He said to me, you can't get A. Because we work with letters. Okay? He said, we don't have A in my class. Like, Father, you don't have A in your class. <laughs> My dad didn't like it because my dad knows he hates this kind of thing. <laughs> 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 uh, all that to say, you ha we have to be supportive, not, not breaking each other. And you know what? Okay. Now look at us. We're all young. You guys are probably like 21, 22, something like that. Now we cannot repeat what the older generations did. We have to work together, no? If we want to change it. But if you continue following them, when I get, get in class, uh, you have to, no, you have to work together. That's how we, we, we move. Uh, what else? Yes, okay. Um, there's a lot. This is uh, before it wasn't happening this much, but now saying I flew. I get people sending me messages all the time asking me how to go to Canada and what to do to go to Canada. My father, it took him 20 years of university teaching, selling our house, two degrees. To come to Canada, okay? يجيني واحد بعمره ديزنف مازال مم با ما يعرف شخص القشو and he wants to go to the خارج. What are you guys doing? Why? What is this thinking? Like the people think that when they're gonna get to the خارج, they're gonna get مليار in their and all that, but there's no problems and no, it's not that. We have different problems, but we also have problems. Reality is. People think that because them, they live in Jazair, 
they think they're going to go outside and because they live that, it's going to get better for them. No, it's not true. I think we should have statistic. Most of the Algerian population in Montreal is divorced. Most of the Algerian population in Montreal lost a kid because we have a system of protection for the young people. If you have a little bit, you say that you have a lot of physical abuse. Yeah, No, but listen, it's crazy because people don't think about this. Most Algerian people who are here, they have one kid or two, right? Because they start living like this. That's one thing. Second thing, you're not in your country. People don't respect you like in Algeria, okay? Baba, j'ai un doctor, 20 ans dans ce moment, ma crash, yum, j'ai un jamia. Understand? Why? Because he didn't find work. Uh, they didn't trust his references, whatever, I don't know. And the machine is not who I don't know. Trying to apply, not one, right? My mom, for example, she came here uh, without any school. I think she finished my not even, but now she has a business. Okay. So, does it depend on you? Does it depend on Khaj? We have we have a lot of different problems. For example, Anna, I see Algeria as the land of opportunity. Buma, you see, they see America as the American dream, the uh, land of opportunity. But the thing is. They're done. Like if I go outside right now and show you, they have the buildings, they have the they have all, right? Now here they're working on problems that we can't even think about yet in Algeria. They're trying to do robotic surgery using like uh, Limanet from uh, mm-hmm. using 5G networks. Uh, they're working on how to send the people the, uh, on Mars, things like that, you know? But in Algeria, Any idea that you take from here and you just reproduce it and apply it to Algerian environment will probably succeed. It's just you have to take the risk. That's the only thing. Um, and I see it as a big opportunity. I want people to actually stay there and, uh, or at least go out, study, get some experience, and then come back and uh, do it. And even though maybe I don't sound serious right now, give me like two, three years, you're going to see me there. <laughs> I'll be, I'll be uh, doing stuff. Another thing I hear a lot, it's, it's annoying because people are in this mindset for Jazeera that prevents them from doing anything. They limit themselves before even trying. networking. But in Jazeera, you're going to come here, you're going to do it. We have, they book times from five to seven. They call it networking event. You should move. Should we discuss you? After that, I need a card. Take how networking. How will it be? Here, it's not fast, fast. Any, any. It's not. No, they say all the knowledge. But the reality is, knowledge is part of the game. You, you have friends right now. Some of them are going to become doctors. Some of them are going to be uh, police officers. Some of them are going to be lawyers. What you're going to just be like? No, I'm not going to be knowledge. You have. You have to. It's part of the game. The ball, the ball, the ball. Neymar. He, 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 the ball. He, he, he goes on the floor, starts rolling because other players are going to use it. You have to play at the same level. If you don't play the game, you're not going to succeed. So don't forget that he mentioned the comment about the because the cafe will let you haram or everything, but okay. But you have to play the game. If you think that you cannot do it, it's just because your solution is not creative enough. It's only that. It's not uh, because. Uh, There's a lot of successful people in Algeria. Let's not lie to each other. There's billionaires on terms of dinar and there's billionaires on terms of dollar. Okay, how they got it? It's not your problem. You you work your way. Mohim came this example. The person who has succeeded. So we can't say that it's impossible to succeed. Okay. That's the other. Mentality. So one thing that I saw, I'll, I'll tell you a bit here. Okay. Um, Anna, par exemple, when I grew, uh, I grew up, I started coding at the age of 12. So I became, uh, I became like I learned to learn by myself, which was a very good skill. Uh, and that made me uh, learn a lot of things. I don't know if you can see the books, but I read a lot. Um, and this is an important skill. In our age right now, uh, the information is going everywhere. You go Facebook, Google, you choose it. And if you don't take advantage of that, we all have the license. Everyone here, whatever. I don't know what level the people are here. But, you know, if you count all the people that are doing chemistry and biology and all that in the world, 
everyone has a license. What do you have extra? Okay, because uh, that, that that's that's easy to well, it's not easy at the time. It's not easy <laughs> for me now. It sounds easy, but what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, everyone has a degree. What do you have extra? And here, what they do here in Canada is that they learn a lot of additional skills. For example, uh, I'll give you an example about Einstein. Einstein, he made big discoveries in physics, right? But no one believed him. So he had to sell it. So he had to practice his communication skills. And I'm not saying this randomly. I read like his whole biography. So you guys have to acquire different skills that are going to help you in life. Uh, communication skills are very important because you can have the best scientific idea, best discovery. If you're not able to sell it, there's no point. And you can also see the other side. If you have no discovery, but you're able to sell it, it's going to work. It's, it's just like that. It's what people see that they work with, not what is actually happening. And I can name a few people, Bonatero and all that, okay? <laughs> there's, a, there's a few people, you know? <laughs> um, so that's pretty much it. It's all about communication. The other thing is people uh, wait for, for motivation. You know, they wait for something to give them their, to make them do something. But the reality is motivation is not there every day. Motivation is there maybe uh, today you're probably motivated because of my talk. You're going to sleep, you'll forget. It's, not, it's, like, it's like if it didn't happen, you know. What you need in life is discipline. Discipline, what I mean by discipline is when you're able to do things that are not fun, but because you have to do them, you do them, okay? And the best way to practice this is praying five times a day. <laughs> It's the best way to practice your discipline. Uh, uh, what else? What else? What else? What else? Um, also, like I went to uh, give a talk at Stanford uh, maybe four years ago or three years ago. I thought in Canada they were working hard. But in Silicon Valley, where Google and uh, Facebook and all that started, I was shocked because it was like uh, everyone on their laptop Coding, the documentary, the other one is coding, one is writing, everyone. You know what I did? I sat down and I started being like, okay, you know what I'll do? <laughs> Me too, you know, <laughs> to not look weird. But one thing that is crazy here is that people, when they're, for example, le uh, transport public, they're all reading, they're all watching documentaries. If you come here and you get on the train or whatever, you will see them. They're all doing something productive. <laughs> you know, it's, it's actually funny. She bet not, I tried it just to, for fun. I was like, okay, let me take out a book. <laughs> so I'm sitting, I'm like reading, but we're not like, it was during the summer. There's no school, nothing. People were like, well, what is this? <laughs> what is yeah, happening? Exactly. But you like, People here, they take their time. Not everyone. We have crazy people too. But uh, what I'm saying is people you make good usage of their time. And people are also hardworking. Um, in Algeria, the, you start working by the age of like what? 22, 23. And even then, that's if you're lucky. For example, me, I started working at 16. The flu's in, the kiosk, the terrain of tennis. And I worked all the way through my PhD. So the PhD, I was working somewhere, doing something. Right, but that's that's pretty much it. You have to work hard. You have to change your way of thinking. Stop putting limiting beliefs on your head. Stop listening to people that are telling you that uh, there is. Uh, I've lived it. I went through it. Even though it's uh, not but it doesn't matter. If you have something to give to the society, people are gonna come see you. If you have nothing to give then what do you expect? You expect them to, to you know, <laughs> help you out? No, it's not going to work. Uh, it's called Marifa. It's really, it's just that. It's like, you know, you have an uncle that has money, you need money, you go see that uncle, you know? <laughs> it's that simple. You 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 need your car repaired. You don't go see a mechanician. You go see a mechanician. You know? <laughs> That's how it works. You have something to offer, we'll come see you. You have nothing to offer, then don't expect to get something from the country, no one is going to help you. They already have their own problems. Um, what else? Belia, the Mecca. Can I say, like, a question? 
Okay, let me see. <laughs> fan of League of Legends. <laughs> I started playing. Uh, I started playing when the game came out. Uh, post beta, so now I don't play that much. But uh, you can see the setup. Crazy gamer. I love my net. I used to play a lot, but uh, I stopped because now I have too much stuff to do. Uh, ouais, bah, c'est phytothérapie en fait. Uh, they're called nutraceuticals. C'est des produits qui viennent. À, en fait, ces produits que j'ai découvert, ils ont été uh, commercialisés sous une marque uh, qui s'appelle Vitoli. Elle est vendue ici en pharmacie. Donc, c'est un type de, de, de nutraceuticals qui est utilisé pour aider les vieux avec plusieurs trucs comme le stress, l'anxiété et tout ça. C'est des trucs qui sont proches pour réguler leur taux de sucre, euh, pour diminuer le stress oxydatif, etc. Malheureusement, puisque j'ai travaillé, même là, je suis des profiteurs. Je ne suis pas de dire. J'ai travaillé avec des gens ici et ils ont pris tous les... They took my research, they made a product from it, and they're selling it, they're making the profits, right? So even here we have this, but it's part of the game. You have to be smart. I wasn't smart. Now you cannot do it again to me. Now if there's a discovery, don't worry about it. <laughs> it's mine. Um, yeah, so what else? What? Wait. Stress oxidative. Uh... Bon, je ne sais pas ce que, ce que tu veux dire par stress oxydatif, mais je vous explique. <rire> Donc, le stress oxydatif, en fait, euh, ce qui se passe, c'est que les cellules tannes ont des mécanismes qui, toute réaction qui utilise de l'oxygène, c'est-à-dire toutes les réactions, la plupart des réactions flocortaines, ils ont une chance de produire des radicaux libres. Les radicaux libres, ils s'accumulent les cellules, mais on a des systèmes antioxydants qui vont euh, se débarrasser de ces molécules-là. Ce qui se passe, c'est que euh, s'il si y a trop de stress oxydatif, euh, ben, ça va endommager les cellules, l'ADN, créer des mutations. Par exemple, une mutation à cause du stress oxydatif sur le gène P53, qui est un suppresseur de tumeur, va causer le cancer. Il euh, euh, y, 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 y a un nombre illimité de mutations qui peuvent euh, créer des maladies. OK donc, le but ici, c'est de comprendre comment le stress oxydatif affecte la protéine hélicaire et d'intérêt pour pouvoir ensuite créer des euh, médicaments qui sont spécifiques à cette réaction-là seulement. Euh, ce qu'on appelle precision medicine, euh, c'est la médecine de précision qui va, euh, qui va faire quelque chose sur euh, le, le, la, la cystine qui se fait euh, oxyder. C'est quand, c'est quand, là, sans... <laughs> I have two questions. How can we introduce the concept of epigenetics? Oh, ça c'est compliqué, ça. <laughs> um, concept d'épigénétique. OK. En fait, ce qui se passe, c'est que vraiment aucun, aucun, pas de science. Il faut utiliser une analogie, un truc euh, qui ressemble... À ça, par exemple. Euh... Par exemple, OK. On va prendre l'exemple d'une voiture. La voiture, elle vient euh, blanche, on va dire, par exemple, avec des lumières qui sont fortes, mais pas trop fortes. OK. Ben, on est capable, par exemple, de changer la couleur de cette voiture. Donc, la, le côté génétique, c'est la voiture en tant que telle, c'est la structure qui est de base. L'épigénétique, pour ceux qui ne savent pas, c'est des modifications. Euh, réversible sur les gènes. Parce que oui, les gènes définissent une partie de notre euh, corps. Par contre, l'environnement aussi, il a un effet sur l'épigénétique, euh, sur le, la génétique. Euh, donc, c'est un peu comme, on va dire, une voiture ou n'importe quel objet. Si on prend la voiture ou, avec, ou on va dire la lampe, la lampe pour faire le, le, le truc, la structure, elle est là. Mais on est capable de changer la lampe, l'ampoule, pour pouvoir quelque chose de plus fort ou moins fort. D'accord C'est ça l'épigénétique, en fait. Ça permet de modifier l'expression des gènes euh, 
according to the uh, environment. Okay. For example, if uh, you if you if I put you in a dark room uh, for uh, ten years and you don't come out of the dark room, well, your eyes are still your eyes. But what's going to happen is that your eyes will start not seeing because your the expression of the receptors that are used to detect light will be decreased. How? Mm -hmm. By epigenetic. So it's just the modifications superficial par dessus le le, le les gènes. En termes de nutrition, par exemple. En termes, mais il faut pas se tromper sur un truc parce que les gens pensent que ils lisent beaucoup sur internet et ils pensent qu'ils peuvent modifier l'épigénétique juste comme ça. Non, c'est pas aussi facile que ça. Euh, c'est pas en changeant ta diète, euh, mais faire une diète, euh, je sais pas moi, X, Y, Z, que tu vas changer ton épigénétique de A à Z. C'est pas, pas aussi simple que ça, sinon on aurait déjà guéri tous les problèmes métaboliques. Euh, même si c'est quelque chose d'épigénétique, il y, y a des trucs à l'intérieur sur lesquels on n'a pas de contrôle. What else? Okay. Um, so for question number two, can I have the, your opinion about the cure of diabetes two with low carbs or zero carbs? So the keto diet or with use of supplements like glutathione. Okay. The thing is, I cannot answer this question. Why? Because if you go online and you search for cures for anything, you will find cures of all different types. Okay. Le problème, c'est que le métabolisme is not that simple. It's not like, oh, I will add glutathione, ça va réduire le, le stress oxydatif, ça va augmenter le, la, la sensibilité à, à, à l'insuline et on va guérir du diabète. Mm. Ça ne fonctionne pas comme ça. Toi, peut-être que tu as euh, 10 molécules de, euh, du récepteur d'insuline, mais peut-être que moi, j'en ai 30. Tu comprends? Donc, je ne peux pas te dire juste, prends ces suppléments-là, ça va te guérir, tu comprends Et c'est ça le problème qu'on fait en ligne, qu'on voit en ligne, c'est que les gens ils te donnent des des idées, genre diminue les sucres, augmente les protéines, diminue les lipides, etc. C'est il y, y a de tout, il y a de tout. La réalité, c'est que le seul truc qui a été prouvé pour améliorer le diabète, les deux trucs en fait, le sport, it's had this idea, parce que not everyone can get up and just run, especially girls because of our society, but that's another story. But it's very, it's very hard, especially usually people who get diabetes type 2, they're either old or they are fat. And that's a problem. And so the other way to do it is through fasting. Siam. Uh, fasting has been shown. Fasting has been shown to improve uh, type 2 diabetes. Uh, if you can do uh, intermittent fasting, you get, you know, get hasanet. En plus de ça, tu règles le diabète. We're good. <laughs> Um, but yeah, you have to do yeah, the fasting has to be uh, higher than 14 hours. That's what the research shows because it activates certain pathways uh, that will uh, um, degrade metabolites that are necessary for fixing uh, the sensitivity to uh, insulin. So fasting and sports, if you're able to put both together, then for sure, There's even people that actually uh, survived type 2 diabetes. They had it, but aki, c'est-à-dire avec le 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 temps, l'âge et tout ça, they get diabetes, but because they become healthier, uh, their sensitivity to insulin improves, and they are not diabetic anymore. So it's it's doable. It's just it's very hard. You have to control everything you eat. Uh, you have to fast, you have to do sports, and usually the people who get diabetes, well, they're not very active and they eat a lot, right? Mm. Okay. On doit partir d'un problème commun de la molécule pour commencer sa recherche. Well, en fait, on part d'un problème, par exemple, moi, je voulais étudier la durée de vie. Euh, je voulais savoir si c'était possible d'augmenter la durée de vie. Donc, ça, c'est mon problème. Maintenant, comment on évalue la durée de vie? Ben, on évalue la durée de vie par le nombre de jours que ces cellules-là vont vivre sans mourir. Et puis, on essaye plusieurs euh, produits. C'est un truc-là, euh, on va dire, euh, aléatoire. Pas aléatoire, mais euh, essai-erreur. 
dès qu'on trouve le phénotype, c'est-à-dire dès qu'on remarque qu'il y a un changement dans la durée de vie, là, on rentre dans les trucs plus polyculaires. Mais la première étape, c'est vraiment, tu as besoin d'un problème que tu dois régler. Et puis là, tu prends une, euh, une mesure, comment mesurer si tu euh, arrives à ton but. Puis après, tu rentres dans les trucs plus spécifiques. Donc, si on veut, par exemple, étudier le, le diabète de type 2, si on veut trouver quelque chose qui va guérir le diabète, de, ben, traiter le diabète de type 2, on peut utiliser plusieurs déterminants. Par exemple, le, le niveau de sucre dans le sang, c'est ce qui est utilisé, le niveau d'insuline dans le sang. Euh, on peut aussi utiliser l'activité de certaines enzymes à l'intérieur de la cellule. Et puis là, on essaye des trucs aléatoirement. On va prendre, on va dire, euh, maintenant, il y a des robots. Avant, c'était... Euh, ben, il, il, avait, il, y avait, il y avait des robots dans mon temps, mais je travaillais dans un laboratoire qui n'était pas euh, milliardaire, là, donc on le faisait à la main. Puis, euh, on les essaie aléatoirement. On prend un groupe, on, on fait une recherche littéraire, premièrement, pour savoir s'il y a des produits qui ont servi à X, Y, Z qu'on peut réutiliser pour quelque chose d'autre. On les essaie tous. Puis après, on prend ceux qui fonctionnent bien puis on les étudie euh, more in depth. Vous avez parlé d'augmentation. Oui, ben en fait, c'est ça. Vous avez parlé de l'augmentation de la durée de vie de cellulaire. On peut, parler, on peut partir de l'idée de retarder l'apoptose. Mais en fait, le produit naturel que j'ai découvert, le, le plus efficace, c'est euh, une manière d'augmenter la durée de vie, c'est que ça retarde euh, la nécrose. Qui est comme l'apoptose, ça ressemble à l'apoptose, mais ça s'appelle nécrose. Et donc, les cellules, elles ne meurent pas. Puis, en plus de ça, ce produit-là, qu'est-ce qu'il fait C'est qu'il va aller euh, activer les enzymes antioxydatives pour protéger les cellules de ce stress-là. Donc, on retarde la nécrose, la durée de vie augmente. Mais si on n'avait pas ce mécanisme pour euh, éliminer ce, ce stress oxydatif qui s'accumule, ben, si on retarde la nécrose, et puis, on, on, on laisse le stress s'accumuler, ça ne ça, ça, ça sert à rien. Parce que oui, ils ne vont pas mourir. Par contre, qu'est-ce qui va se passer? C'est qu'ils euh, ne vont pas bien fonctionner. Donc oui, on peut commencer par l'apoptose. Si on trouve quelque chose qui, euh, qui retarde l'apoptose, ben on peut se dire que oui, ce truc-là, il augmente la durée de vie. Et après, on rentre dans les détails. C'est bon. Vous ne pas bon. If you guys have any yeah, questions, the, the question, if you guys have any questions, you can send them to my social media. But please, one thing that I don't like is people. I like I keep telling it in the conferences because people contact me for how to get to Canada, and it's very very annoying. Like I I, I got to the point where I closed like my social media. Now I'm trying to get back into it, but I closed them for at least like three four years. Right. The reason for that is. I came here at the age of nine years old. I did not apply for visa or the permit, the residence, the PR here. My dad did it, so I have no idea about this. And why would I have an idea about it? I, I, I'm here. I don't need to search. <laughs> like it's a waste of my time to go and read on it. There's no point. And so I have no idea how to do it. I mean, I do have a little bit, but please <laughs> don't contact me for that. I, I, I don't. The rest, if you have questions about biology, chemistry. Whatever, send them over. Whenever I have time, I'll answer them. Et ça fait plaisir. I believe so. I like it's not Camilo. Yep. Did I go through time or we're good? My pleasure. We're good. No questions, guys? C'est bon? Stop hiding, guys. Open your camera, start like, uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's weird when you're presenting on uh, on Zoom because you don't see any faces. And so you're just talking with yourself. So it's a bit weird. <laughs> I'm not used to it. <laughs> But yeah, go put your cameras, guys. Stop uh, what you're doing and uh, dress up, get good. <laughs> it helps the speakers, you know. Yes, it's true. That's true. Well... I believe so. Well. So thank you, Dr. Yunus Mutko. It was a really a pleasure for us. It was really nice. Uh, Kamel Swalah Lihadatam was really, really interesting. Uh, we have we are we are very happy to have you uh, with us in this in this edition of the Chem Talks, the eCam Talks. Uh, and we hope uh, we'll have you another time, inshallah. <laughs> 
Ia, dumai. Ce ai dumai? Well, uh, like I was saying, or like, like I was telling Islam, hopefully when I come to Algeria, I'll come see you guys if you organize any events. I'll, uh, yes. I'll text That you. That would be nice. <laughs> That would be really nice. Thank you.